In this video I'm going to give you my 5 tips for creating animations like this in After Effects. Hi, I'm Adam Burnett, this is the Video Shop. I was teaching shape player animations in my class recently and showing students some examples of nice physics, including this one which I'm afraid I can't credit as I don't know who did it. Anyway, I decided to animate something similar for fun as a way to show how it could be done. I'm not doing this as a tutorial as there's no rocket science involved. There's no magic shortcut or effect I can show you, it's just basic keyframing. So I thought instead I'd give you some helpful tips for creating similar animations. I will walk you through how I approached making this, but if you want more of a deep dive, I've uploaded the whole workflow to my sister channel, the Video Shop Longplay. It's over six hours long and covers the whole process in real time. There's also the project file which you can download for free in the link below. Teach me. Okay, let's get started. My first tip is to start with the basics. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Start with the basics. Oh wow, thanks Adam for that searing insight. What next? Don't animate whilst driving. Remember to breathe. All right, bear with me. If you haven't done the bouncing ball exercise, that's where you should begin. Most animation courses start with it, and there's a reason for that. If you're new to animation, there's plenty of tutorials out there, so I'm not gonna to add to the pile. It'll teach you about timing, arcs, weight, and other basic animation principles. Once you've got the hang of keyframing a bouncing ball, it's not a huge leap to have an object bounce up and land in frame, as I've started off with here. I would start by separating the dimensions on the position, and have your first object either bounce into place, or jump up and bounce in. Just get one thing animated nicely, then add some rotation. Perhaps add some animation to the path if you want to change the shape. You don't have to plan out everything that you're going to do. This is my pathetic storyboard and I barely stuck to it. Although I would say probably keep it simple, maybe just a grid of four shapes or nine. I made this up as I went along and it was only after a couple of hours and I committed to a grid of 25 that I realized it was going to take ages to finish. Don't get me wrong, it was still fun, but every time I went back to it, I was a bit like, the nightmare begins. My second tip is to play around with cause and effect. Having one object cause another's movement is more satisfying than things just randomly appearing or bouncing in. Again, this doesn't have to be planned. I just kind of made it up as I went along. And the simple version of this is to just have things appear as other objects land. So there's an element of causation. But as you work, you'll see opportunities for more playful touches, like here when this quarter circle shape rotates round and pushes out the square, or here when this triangle snaps into place like it's magnetized. Also, if you do something like this where all your objects fall down, it can really elevate your animation if you have a few of them bump into each other. The reference animation had all the objects jump into the air, hang, and then fall down together. It's fun and not that difficult to do. I had mine animate more like the ball was causing the whole Jenga tower of objects to topple down which isn't as hard as you might think. You can simply keyframe the X position and make some adjustments to the rotation timing and the Y position timing. The viewer will notice these touches, even if it's only on a subconscious level. My third tip is keyframe, tweak, preview, repeat. I know this sounds like a Tom Cruise film in some nerd's parallel universe, but stick with me here. Also, seriously, what is that film meant to be called now? It went into production with the same name as the graphic novel, which is an amazing title but makes no grammatical sense. Then it was called Edge of Tomorrow, which you instantly forget as soon as you hear it, so generic. Then they took the tagline and half-heartedly changed the title, but not really. Get on with it! All right, all right, back to the animation. This is kind of a mantra that I always tell my students. Constantly preview your work and tweak the timing and adjust the curves in the graph editor. It may take a couple of tweaks, it may take 10, whatever. It'll soon become muscle memory to preview your animation after you've made any adjustments. I now press my number keypad zero key to preview without thinking in the same way I'll reflexively reach for the remote control anytime I accidentally stumble upon Mrs. Brown's voice. But just keep doing it until you find that Goldilocks sweet spot. And there's a good chance that you'll know instinctively when it's right, because we've all spent our lives observing how things move, fall, bump into each other in real life. My fourth tip is, actually, indulge me briefly while I do a quick thanks. If you're on this list, it's because I've reached out for advice, or you've left nice feedback or recommended the channel. Genuinely, it's really appreciated, as making these videos takes time and it's all new and unfamiliar to me. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, maybe... Totally up to you, no pressure. Okay, so tip number four is don't use Newton. Well, not at first. Some of you may be thinking, what's the point in animating this keyframe by keyframe when you can just use a third party plugin like Newton or use Dynamics in Cinema 4D? And to that I'd respond, just because you can take a picture, should we not bother painting? Ah Practice helps you get better. When you're just starting out in After Effects, the graph editor can be daunting. Keyframing and timing can be awkward. How do you know that the weight and timing of animation is wrong? Or if it's deliberately exaggerated so that it ends up kind of brilliant? I've always loved you. Now it does depend on what you want to create. I wouldn't dream of animating this by hand, but certain animations like this, you want the element of control that comes from keyframing and choosing what goes where and when, and you just don't get that control with dynamic simulations. Having said that, you could animate your scene up by using keyframe animation, then use a dynamic simulator to have it crash down. 
Fair play, I'll give you that. My fifth and final tip is to have fun. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Another useless, generic, fridge magnet bit of advice from charlatan YouTuber Adam Bennett. Doing the work should be fun. I often see students getting frustrated because they're not happy with the results they're getting. I'm bloody miserable, actually. And I tell them I'm a decrepit old bastard who's been using After Effects for over 20 years, and even I fail on an astonishingly regular basis. While I don't necessarily subscribe to the Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hours principle, it's true that practice makes better, if not perfect, which is why the journey should be fun. I also think that if you're having fun, then that will bleed into the work itself. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this animation took me over six hours. I could have watched Heat twice and had time left over to watch a sunset or something, which would be depressing if I didn't enjoy animating. There's joy in keyframing, previewing, repeating, and gradually seeing your creation come to life. Admittedly, this is true of any motion graphics or animation, but with this sort of animation, the knowledge that you brought these things to life yourself is intoxicating. And that's it, my five tips for animating dynamics in After Effects. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.